Between 2012 and 2022, Rwanda's population grew by 3 million, representing an annual population growth rate of 2.3%. It is projected to reach 22 million by 2050, with more than half residing in its cities. To mitigate the challenges posed by such rapid urbanization and population density in a small, landlocked country, Rwanda is working to ensure that its urban centers are inclusive, sustainable, foster socio-economic growth, and are green. Rwanda championed the Smart Cities Blueprint in 2017, proposing a roadmap for how African countries can take advantage of ICT to ensure that these goals are met. Rwanda also set up the Smart City Hub to bring together public, private, and development stakeholders for knowledge sharing, design, and co-creation of impactful solutions. By the year 2050, maybe three quarter of the entire population of the world will be living in cities. So this is bringing a lot of pressure to cities and have efficient transportation, efficient electricity, clean water, service to citizens, education, health, as well as employment and economic opportunities and doing it in a sustainable way. So the hub is going to work as a, an environment or a platform, I might say, whereby you can have policy making uh, component, training, experimentation. The Smart City Hub aims to pioneer impactful projects in areas ranging from renewable energy and infrastructure, water and waste management, mobility and hospitality, digital transformation and innovation, and climate adaptation. One such project is the Smart Waste Collection Project. These are flagship projects that we, we, we've been able to put in place. Uh, we brought in um, cashless payment in transportation, ensuring that people can move faster. One of the key challenges has been how you can sort the solid waste, especially at public places like uh, markets. So we started with the markets, putting a smart waste collector. It's fully, it's fully automated, it generates data, you will know what type of data, you know when you have to, to collect, and then they go to recycling uh, centers. We built five out of Kigali, and we're looking at expanding it uh, in other secondary cities and increasing also their number within uh, the city of Kigali. Rwanda has also invested efforts to mitigate the effects of climate change, a key cross-cutting area identified by the NST1. The Climate Fund established to that effect has invested extensively in high-impact green tech ventures, aiming to drive the adoption of green technologies as public goods. Rwanda, to, to be honest, is not, a great, uh, is not a great emitter, you know, in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but we are quite affected by climate change, right? So it was important for the country to be able to make sure that it caters to uh, the effects of climate change and to be able to really think about how we raise these finances. And this is what really the, the fund has been able to, has been put in place to do, is the government situation that's been put in place to uh, help the country mobilize resources, to help the country's green agenda, and also its transition towards a green uh, economy. We are looking at really having priority sectors that we invest in. You know, you talk about, for example, agriculture, which is quite affected by climate change. We've really tried to, uh, to invest in climate smart agriculture. How do you also evolve technology, as you mentioned, and seeing that the pollution is actually rising within the city of Kigali. What we did is uh, we looked at, you know, how can we enhance public transportation? A few years ago, uh, a company that was called Ampersand, that is now, you know, quite notorious and has actually expanded outside of Rwanda, we actually gave them the seed funding to our prototype and to really uh, think about how we're going to create a, a model that can be not only uh, feasible in Rwanda, but replicable at scale. And uh, right now it's about, I mean, when you go outside the streets, you know, we are quite happy to see that it's, uh, it's, it's a project that has moved and progressed. Rwanda's commitment to building smart cities and communities is best illustrated by its pioneering of Green City Kigali, a planned urban development that will, among its many socio-economic attributes, be 100% carbon neutral. In the context of population growth, in the, pop in the context of uh, Rwanda being one of the densely populated countries in the world and in Africa, uh, Rwanda has taken a step to, this, to determine how it's going to grow its cities in order to meet its uh, Vision 2050 goals of accommodating 70% of its population in urban areas. So Green City Kigali is an initiative of the government of Rwanda. It's Rwanda's pilot towards sustainable urbanization. 
We've just completed the master plan of Kinyinya Hill, which is the location that was chosen as a green city. Um, it's 700 hectares. We are now moving forward to the pilot site. We have a, a land on which to develop 2,000 units. With the 2,000 dwellings, we expect to accommodate about 10,000 uh, population within this, this site. Our goal in urban planning is the population we need to accommodate on this hill, from 38,000 today, we are projecting a population of above 170,000 to 200,000. And about 51,000 jobs, um, 30 schools, um, health centers. Rwanda has also emphasized the need for data to inform its urbanization policies and guide their implementation in a bid to ensure their sustainability. In achieving this, technology was once again the solution. Such is the case of the urban dynamic map. We have seen that in the past, most government institutions, when they're doing planning, when they're doing infrastructure development, we did not really care much about what other institutions are doing. So we could find that there was a lot of overlaps and conflicting projects, which results in a lot of um, losses, you know, those money losses, time opportunity costs, and things like that. And so one of the ways to fix that problem, once you need to develop infrastructure, you need to look at it from a spatial perspective and then see what else is happening over there. What's the current existing infrastructure? What does the topography look like? And what are other planned developments that are that going to be taking place there? And then that development uh, requires a platform or a system to help you do that. So basically UDM gives people the opportunity to plan and upload designs and then compare how these designs integrate with everything else in, the, in, the, in that area. For future plans, uh, existing infrastructure, and potential geographic and topographic uh, you know, implications to that project. So you can actually start seeing impact, but mostly it's financial, uh, because you know, as I started, when we had you know, um, parallel projects that were going on and they would sometimes overlap, it's a financial burden, because we need to redesign some of one of the projects and in so doing, you need to reinvest a lot of money to make that happen. You need to destroy some of the infrastructure you've already built, which means there's going to be a lot of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars that's going to be saved, uh, you know, through DM. And of course, we're going to see some social impact as well, where, you know, historically there's been projects that impact significantly um, activities of the citizens already or the residents of the area. So we're now have the opportunity to actually simulate potential impact of any develop infrastructure development. Next up, we will explore how Rwanda is positioning itself to be at the forefront of the responsible adoption of artificial intelligence and other emerging technologies and what this means for citizens. Mm -hmm.